wasn't paying attention when I put this thing on. Let's try that again. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you weren't awake, that's part of the theme for the day. Uh, this <laughs> Christ the King Sunday, and it is watch, stay awake, uh, is the, uh, the watchword uh, from, from our Lord. Um, you'll notice that the, um, uh, for those who are visitors with us, <clears throat> You'll notice that uh, the service today uh, is an adaptation of the uh, Divine Service 4. And so you'll be familiar with some of those sections. I don't think I need to call anything to your uh, attention other than what you're already hearing is uh, my little grandchildren from um, Mississippi brought me a Pascagoula cold. And so. It, it's not that I'm uh, avoiding you or trying to, uh, or I'm mad at you. I just won't be uh, greeting folks uh, as I normally do at the end of the service, okay? Uh, do not want to give you this right before uh, we go into the, uh, the Thanksgiving week. So having said that, uh, um, as we are focusing then on the end times and remembering Jesus' return, uh, as an as an imminent event, um, the first hymn calls us to uh, uh, pay attention and listen to God's word. Oh.
so we gather as God's people in these words that carry us back to the day of our baptism as we became God's sons and daughters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. Since we're gathered here today to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our own unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, in word, and in deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. So together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me. So I invite you to remain standing or to kneel at this point as we take a few moments to consider the uh, days of these past week and uh, our words and actions and attitudes. Take a moment. And remembering what we have done amiss and also where we have failed to do that which God has asked. We come before him now as we pray together. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, Merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through the Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join now in this responsive reading of a portion of Psalm 39 and of a section out of 2 Peter chapter 3. So we do this antiphonally, phrase by phrase. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Psalm of righteousness. O Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting. Behold, you have made my days a handbreadth, and my life a And now, O oh Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. Hear my prayers, O oh Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace and my tears. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may persevere in both faith and holiness of living. For you live and reign 
with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we uh, hear the lessons appointed for Christ the King Sunday, the final Sunday of the church year. The Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 51, beginning at the fourth verse. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arm will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who, w who dwell in it will die in the like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle comes from Jude, starting at the 20th verse. But you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise as we hear a continuation of the reading out of the 13th chapter of Mark, uh, that chapter known as the Little Apocalypse. And we pick things up in the 24th verse, the Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you. Jesus is speaking. In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken and then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory and then he will send out his angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or, or that hour, as no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father, be on guard. Keep awake. For you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ.
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That prayer out of the book of Revelation. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Certainly it has been popular in the last century or so to predict Jesus' second coming. And you probably will remember some groups and individuals since those kind of uh, uh, early 1900s, kind of around the time of the First World War, uh, and since that time, to specify that exact time of Christ's return. Unsuccessfully, I might add. So let me take you to some words of our Lord talking about the time before he returns. Picking up in verse 24 of Mark 13. Jesus said, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken and then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory and then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Those times that have, in a sense, in certain instances, been, been met, uh, two world wars, other circumstances that bring to mind this uh, signs in the heavens. And certainly there, there have been individuals who have looked at some of these things. Uh, they've, they've tried to tie the parousia, that's that Greek word that refers to uh, Jesus' return, to world events like the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, a third world war, or some ancient people's calendar. Things that could be seen as the fulfillment of certain comments by our Lord about his return. However, such notions fail to take into consideration the fact that Jesus says a little bit further on in part of the text from last Sunday that no one knows, not the angels nor the Son, only the Father. And we do need to take into consideration the fact that Jesus was making use of well-known images and phrases out of the Old Testament and from intertestamental writings. We're going to be looking at those in some detail in Bible class today, probably the next two or three Sundays, this little apocalypse of, of St. Mark. You've heard me use that word, apocalypse, apocalyptic. You've seen it in titles of movies and probably of some books that you might have read somewhere along the line. It's simply a Greek word that means unveiling uncovering, revealing. Hence the, the name that uh, those of you who are, uh, who grew up on something other than the King James know that last book of the Bible as what? The Revelation of St. John the Divine. Those of us who are a little bit older, who went through confirmation back in the old days, as folks might say, as you were learning uh, books of the Bible, you probably learned that that last book is not known as Revelation of St. John the Divine, but rather the Apocalypse of St. John the Divine. It means the same thing. It's a writing that is coded, especially uh, in uh, Jewish images, used during times of intense religious persecution. 
That's why we have this Old Testament book called Daniel, which is not a prophetic book. It's an apocalyptic book. We need to understand that if we're reading that book. We have this chapter out of Mark, and we have that entire book at the very end of Scripture. Jesus using what is very familiar language to bring a message to speak to the people of his day, to express that need for them to be faithful, to be steadfast, to remain solid and secure in the midst of chaos and events that no one wants to live through. He's not providing a timetable for the future. He's not presenting to us some roadmap for the days to come. He is talking about the realities of what the Jewish believers were already beginning to experience. Remember the dating of the book of Revelation, the apocalypse? It's very late. It's the last Old Testament, uh, the, the last New Testament book. It's written by John when he's on Patmos. We know that he's there from about 90 AD until he dies sometime shortly after the turn of the century. Already the church was finding itself in the crosshairs of persecution, both localized and imperial. We think of some of those emperors of Rome, Nero, Trajan, Domitian, who purposely targeted Christians. And so here's a book that's meant to give comfort, to say, yes, difficult times lie ahead. But no matter how bleak, no matter how desperate the situation, things are not out of control. And that's still the same message to us today. Wars, earthquakes, famine, strange occurrences in the heavens, all of these are to be a reminder to the believers that Jesus is coming. That he not might return, but that he will return. And how does uh, Jesus phrase it? With great power and glory. And other images that come to us out of Scripture. That every eye will see him. Every eye. No matter when that person lived. Since the days in the garden. To the present moment. Every eye will see him. And at that point, it will be too late for those who don't know him as Lord and Savior. Apocalyptic writing is, is telling us that history as we understand it, according to Jesus, was not just some series of random events occurring sort of helter-skelter. No, Jesus is saying that the future is this ordered progression moving ever closer to that day when all eyes would see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. The message to us, dear friends, is that despite appearances, God is still in control of world events as he was back in Daniel's day as he was at this time when the book of Revelation is being written and when Mark 13 was being penned. Think about this. If you, if you go back to the gospel How does Jesus describe himself 
What name does he use? Does he say, I, Jesus? No. I, the Lord? No. I, the Messiah? No. Time and time and time and time again, he uses this description that is pulled right out of the book of Daniel. Right? You know these words. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister. Give his life as a ransom for many. The Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. You get it? When you are reading in your Bible and you run across that phrase and it's there throughout the Gospels and it's picked up by St. Paul. Let it be a source of, of comfort to you and strength knowing, yes, this son of man knows what's going on. We're going to say it in the creed, right? Seated at where? The right hand of Almighty God, the Father. What is that picture? Seated at the right hand. That's the place of power. Go back in the Old Testament. Is Pharaoh running the show during those 14 years? Those seven good years and those seven eleven uh, uh, evil years? Lean years? No, who's running the show is Joseph. The Pharaoh has handed everything over to him. The only person he answers to has to do with the personal whims of the Pharaoh. God has handed over all things to his son. As he is there. This one who, who says and reminds us with that terminology, son of man. That he is one of us. That he isn't somehow separated from this world. He is the son of man. And when you hear or follow events that are happening in some other part of the world, you know, maybe in, uh, in the Middle East, some of you can remember any number of peace talks that have occurred over the past decades. That's not where the hope of the world is. That's sort of like the idea that when the temple gets rebuilt in Jerusalem, then Jesus is going to return. We need to understand who it is, who is the prince of peace, not some negotiating team, not a couple of earthly rulers who determine, oh, we're going to cease our, our, um, would you even describe it? Less than peaceful acts against one another. No, this is the Prince of Peace who says, I am coming soon, right? That's what we sang in that hymn. Come. Lord Jesus, come. So where is the fate of the world? It's in the hands of him who sits at the right hand of the Father, who will return in power and great glory. He is the one who calls us to trust him, to depend on him, to realize that he has all things in his control. Whether we happen to like the immediate circumstances or not, he has all things in his control. And when the last grains of time sift out through that hourglass of human history, 
It is only God's love for us that will bring lasting peace. That's what calls us to a sense of the urgency and the immediacy of Jesus' return. And I'd like to share with you in closing a story that I, I think will help you to get the picture. It's actually a, a story told by um, one of the popes, I think John Paul. While taking a tour in Europe, a tourist visited a lovely estate in Italy. And he admired the beautiful garden which had received such obvious, exquisite care. And he complimented the only person that he could find, a, a gardener. And he asked him, how long have you been here? And the reply was, 25 years. So how often has the owner been to this gorgeous estate? Four times. And when was the last time that he was here? Twelve years ago. But he, but he must write you often to check on things. No, never. So who does he send by to check up on you? just leaves me to do what is necessary. I'm left pretty much alone. But you keep this garden so lovely, one would think that you were expecting the owner to return tomorrow. Oh, no, 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 sir. Not tomorrow. Today. Today. I expect his return. You get the point? Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Son of man, will return. Are you ready for him to return today? If that's the timetable in which that return has been marked, he's coming. Are you ready today? Amen. And now may that peace and the wonder of God's love for us and his grace and his mercy Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And would you join me in these words that uh, have served the church for all these many centuries that speak to the matter of Jesus' return, among other things. Would you please rise? We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the king and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. 
and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you've looked at your bulletin, you see the names of individuals that we bring before the Lord this, uh, this day. The uh, family and friends of Pauline Hensley, this uh, second cousin of, uh, of Monica's who passed away this, this week in Missouri. And uh, we remember also from yesterday, um, family and friends who memorial service for John. And this coming Saturday, we will be gathering again as a congregation to uh, remember God's blessing on Andrew Rison Buckler as we lift up uh, her family and friends. You see some individuals that uh, that we remember today. Uh, Dolores Zachary, as uh, she's had this uh, heart surgery. She was hoping to be home uh, yesterday, but uh, when I visited her on Friday, the uh, uh, folks were saying, probably not Dolores. And so uh, please remember her. You see also uh, Alta Hook, after a very lengthy stay, uh, at least they, uh, they've determined what's, what's going on with her. Anita, Juanita Fleshik, this uh, uh, mother of Monica's, who's uh, having some trouble, and doctors are attempting to determine what's going on. And so we pray that uh, God would grant a safe journey to Mike and Monica as they travel there. Uh, Gary McDaniel. Uh, we had remembered him last Sunday. Uh, this is Lori Lynn's brother as uh, they're uh, continuing to, uh, to deal with that, uh, that infection that he has. Uh, we've been remembering two pastors, one of them uh, uh, here locally, uh, Pastor Pengle, and uh, I spent uh, Thursday morning with him. He was then scheduled to begin uh, his his uh, treatment uh, later in the day, uh, and and Travis Ferguson he shares in common uh, with uh, Lieutenant Wyatt uh, being over in the Middle East, and so we lift up uh, both of them. You see, thanks uh, offered up for Patty Corellis and uh, Roberta Dalpini. Uh, the Lord has has been gracious to them, and I know that you have. Others that you would you would commend to our Lord and Savior, 
as we join to, uh, to pray, you'll have opportunity to do that. So I invite you to kneel or to, uh, to stand. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church, that God would give us grace to serve him with reverence and awe, granting us faith to endure to the end, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the pastors in our circuit and in our district and in a, a cross synod, that God would give them the words to testify to his love in Christ Jesus and the hope that is in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the troubled in mind and spirit, and for the lonely, that God would give them strength to cast every care on him and give them quietness of heart through a firm trust in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the leaders of our nation, that they may walk in the way of justice and truth using the power vested in them to protect the weak and the innocent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those threatened by natural disasters, wars, famines, and troubles of any kind, that God would fill all hearts with repentance and humility to trust him in every circumstance. So let us pray to the Lord. For the hungry, that they would be filled with good things. For the poor, that we would see the opportunity to be Christ's hands in caring for them. For the sick, that they may be healed. For those who mourn, that they may be comforted. For those who travel, that God would watch over them. And also, these that we've named, and these individuals and these concerns, that we bring to you at this point in time, O oh Lord, in this silent moment. And so as we lift up our praises and our petitions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. And finally, in thanksgiving for all those who have departed this life in faith, that if we see the signs of our Lord's second coming, we would not lose heart, but would remain faithful unto death and receive the crown of life. And so let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray our Savior's prayer. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And then in the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink it all of you. This cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you.
And now may this true body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you steadfast to life everlasting. Go in his peace, in his power, his presence. Please rise. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift once again. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in perfect love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless. problems with the, with the other one. A couple of quick reminders. Uh, this 
Wednesday evening. Uh, not only a time to sing those incredible uh, Thanksgiving hymns that all of us are, are so familiar with, uh, but a chance for us as a congregation to, uh, to hear our latest seminarian. Uh, Matt Doblers um, is here and I am so looking forward to, to hearing. I, he sent me a copy of the sermon. It is a fantastic sermon. Make sure that you are here. Uh, Wednesday evening at seven o'clock as we join to sing and as uh, you have occasion then to, uh, to hear Matt uh, before he heads off on his vicarage come next, uh, um, next you know, late spring, early summer. You've got that insert in your bulletin about the uh, poinsettias. Um, it's been tradition here to, you know, to fill the, the chancel area with uh, these beautiful Christmas flowers. And so uh, make sure that you, you get those uh, back in as we can remember also then uh, those that uh, either you're remembering or um, whose presence you are celebrating in your life. I think other than a note that uh, Lori stuck on my door, uh, says, Pastor, please announced that if you ordered uh, these uh, soup mixes or the uh, hot chocolates from the youth, uh, the orders are bagged and they are just inside the library door. Uh, if you ordered and didn't pay for those, then you need to, uh, uh, to check with her. Uh, she and I both will be around uh, Monday and Tuesday and, and Wednesday, obviously not on Thursday and Friday. Anything else? Pastor. Yes. Oh, over there. Oh, over there. Yeah. Sorry. Um, the, uh, my, my mom's uh, memorial will be at 1 o'clock. Or, no, 1 o'clock. It's 1 to, one to 2 and serves 2 to 3. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that was a uh, that was a typo over uh, a, a a typo that carried over. You know, that's one of those things. Some of you know, if you don't change something in a uh, in a um, a, a listing, uh, it's going to keep what was there. And so, uh, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, it's not a ten o'clock funeral. Last uh, uh, Saturday was at ten o'clock. This one is at one and then uh, visitation the hour before. So thank you, Jim, for, for catching that. Anything else? May God go with you. Like I said, I will not be uh, shaking your hand. Uh, I do not want to give this uh, cold to you. And, uh, but I'll, I'll kind of give you a friendly wave, sort of like Queen Elizabeth does, right? <laughs>